Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday edition of the Cabral Concept, where we are going to be going over the seven factors for flawless skin. So one of the things that I've learned over the years in my practice of integrative health and naturopathy is the understanding that really healthy skin, like truly healthy glowing skin, is always an inside out operation. That means that when you are focused on improving your skin for you know that that glow or that vibrancy or for overall longevity most of the work should be done internally I have no problem at all with coming up with a great external skincare process and program. And, and I do believe in that. And I'll be talking more, much more about that over this coming year. I think there are certain things that you should be using on your skin and certain things that are a little too harsh and, again, are more short-term based. But all of that said, none of that matters if you're not doing the internal work. So that's the literally the icing on the cake, right? That's the best way to describe it. What you need to do is make sure your body is balanced from the inside out on a daily basis. And that's what I want to go over here today. Many of you are going to recognize at least a handful of them or so. Some will probably be new. So what I want to do is give you all seven, and I'm always happy to take comments uh, right on YouTube below the video or, of course, on Instagram as well. All right. And again, both of them are just my name, Stephen Cabral. If you want to uh, communicate, check in, hang out, well, we'd be happy to uh, talk with you there. All right. So seven factors for flawless skin. The first one is this. You may have heard this one. You may have not. But I really, I want to share this with you. You have to hydrate. And it's not hydrating all at once. So a lot of people, and by this I mean water, a lot of people will not drink any water all morning long and then be like, oh, I haven't drank enough water today. And then they'll take down like a liter of water in the afternoon. That is not the best way to stay hydrated. Think about this. One of the reasons why there are sometimes flash floods or that droughts are not helped at all, like in California, by a lot of rain like torrential rain, is that the ground, the soil is too dehydrated to be able to actually absorb the water. Your body's not radically different. You can't give all the water all at once. Why? It will never make it to the skin. Your body can't just take in a liter of water all at once. You can't process that. Well, it processes it, but it processes it right out of your body. You're going to urinate out the majority of that. Now, I know and I understand that your body operates at a equilibrium for hydration. So if your body's hydrating, you're always removing the same amount essentially that you're putting in, but it's fresh and it is bathing your cells in water. Now, many people though are chronically dehydrated by a couple percent and that makes a huge difference when over two thirds of your body is water. So what I want to do is just simply say this, you want to drink water throughout the day and people always ask, does a smoothie count? A smoothie counts, okay? Herbal tea counts, Non-caffeinated beverages, for the most part, count as long as they're natural and made with real water. So, for example, herbal tea is made typically with herbal tea leaves, let's say like ginger or Tulsi or something like that, and it's made with just good, fresh, ideally spring water, if not good filtered water, right? So that's it. It's predominantly water. There's no caffeine. There's no diuretic-based effect. Now, if you're talking about a smoothie, well, typically you're mixing water with some type of fruit. Most fruit is... 88% or greater water. If you look at it, right, I mean, look at dried fruit. It shrivels up to almost nothing. It's almost all water. That's it, 
I mean, literally all water and skin for most fruit out there. So again, all of this counts as hydration. How much hydration? About half your body weight in ounces of water per day. It's a good place to start. It's not set in stone, but most people, if you weigh, again, 160 pounds, you need about 80, 80 ounces of water per day. Not 80 glasses, 80 ounces of water per day. That equates to 10 glasses a glass being eight ounces. So most that's why most people, they say, oh, drink eight ounces, eight glasses of water a day. Well, eight glasses of water a day is the starting point. Most people, again, 160 pounds, they might need more like 10. If you sweat a lot, you probably need more, right? So just keep that in mind. But you want to hydrate again throughout the day. You can have a glass of water when you wake up with a little bit of uh, fresh lime or lemon squeezed in, a little pinch of sea salt if you want, put in some vitamin C, put in some daily fruit and vegetable blend, whatever you want to do right? Hydrate. Okay. Then you can have your smoothie a little while longer, a little, little later, or you can have your, I mean, if you have coffee, you're just not counting that as part of your hydration for the day. It's not that you can't drink it. It's just not part of your hydration. Okay. So do whatever you'd like, but then make sure you're drinking water throughout the day. Okay. All of that matters. You can stop drinking water after dinner. If you don't want to wake up and urinate throughout the middle of the night, I get it. I understand. But there's a good 12 hour period of time from like six in the morning to six at night or seven in the morning to seven at night that you can be hydrating. All right. So just split your water throughout the day. Number two is this. This one you may not know. A lot of people with skin rashes or rashy skin or acne or any skin-based issue, any infl inflammation issue of the skin can have food sensitivities. And most people are eating the three most common food sensitivities in the world from an IgG perspective. IgG means that it's a latent response, which means it's not about hives or bloating or gas or a headache when you eat them right away. What it means is 24 hours to up to 72 hours later, you could have joint pain, fatigue, brain fog, uh, inflammation, low mood, and skin issues, right? So these are called IgG sensitivities. They're delayed reactions. We know them. They're well studied. Again, you have those Ig means immunoglobulin. The A and the E are going to be more immediate. IgM more midterm, latent, moving towards IgG delayed. Okay. So the most three common food sensitivities. If you just want to say, hey, what are the most common ones out there? They are cow's milk, dairy. That's number one. Not goat. Not sheep. Cow's milk. Cow's milk is number one with 80% of the people. Again, we run labs for people all over the world, right? All over the world. You can find the labs. You can find this food sensitivity test at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. Comes with a full consultation, runs about 200 different foods, normal foods. You can see which ones you're sensitive to. You can decide to or not. It's totally your choice. But here's, here's the thing. Most people, and we run, again, 10,000 plus, more, well more than 10,000 labs a year. And I can tell you, food sensitivity being one of the most popular labs, 80 plus percent of the people sensitive to cow's milk dairy. Okay. Number two, gluten. And gluten is, again, a food that many people eat on a daily basis. The third one, eggs. Now, eggs, I've seen overcome many times in my practice. Many, many times. Okay. People can overcome this. But initially, egg whites, believe it or not, not at the yolks, the egg white, which has more than double the allergens as the yolk, okay? It can be a sensitivity. We do a removal for six weeks, 12 weeks, or six months, depending on the sensitivity. I have a whole podcast on that. We'll try to link it up today. If you want to go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2167, we'll link up the video case study I did on food sensitivities, taking you through it, seeing exactly what it is. Uh, but those are the three. So even if you have skin issues and you just want to eliminate those three for a period of, let's say, four weeks, Check it out. You might feel dramatically different, right? And that's what it's all about. It's about self-experimentation in healthy ways. And then, of course, for our customized uh, food sensitivity test, you can always just run that lab. And that's at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. All right, number three is this. Remove sugar and processed foods, okay? It's not just candy. A lot of people think, well, I don't eat candy. And I, and I, I know a lot of people are not eating candy. So that's, that's a good thing, right? When I was little, I used to love candy. Used to eat quite a bit of it, right? That's what I would use my uh, couple quarters. I would spend that on whatever type of candy out there. But it's also beverages with sugar, right? That counts too. And there are a lot of people out there drinking uh, iced tea and and all sorts of different energy drinks that have lots of sugar in them. Okay, but there's also processed food which breaks down your sugar almost immediately, right? So we know that just a piece of white bread actually breaks down and raises blood sugar faster than regular sugar. So you have to understand these things can be metabolized very, very quickly uh, through your body. 
So that matters. So if you're eating a lot of processed pasta or processed bread, uh, those, those can be issues as well. And that sugar can feed bacteria, which can cause acne and skin issues, or and, and it can create bacterial imbalances in your body, or it can create an inflammatory process too, because a lot of those foods also have inflammatory omega-6s. All right, speaking of the gut, right? We talked about that with food sensitivity and kind of some bacteria there. You have to look for leaky gut. If I can give you one issue with adult based acne and skin rashes and even rosacea, right? Psoriasis, rosacea, eczema, adult acne, it's leaky gut. Leaky gut, lots of shows on this, but it's basically when your intestines, which are naturally partially permeable, very small to allow fatty acids, single amino acids, and uh, glucose molecules through, well, it becomes more permeable, which now allows larger protein molecules to seep through, bacteria, et cetera. It goes into your bloodstream, and it gets processed through your liver, your kidneys. It also gets processed through your skin. Why through your skin? Well, your skin's the largest excretory organ in the body, which means it's very happy to push these things out of your skin to get them out of the body. What do they show up as? Acne, skin rashes, all sorts of issues, all right? So look for leaky gut. Uh, there are two labs that you could run that, that don't say, oh, leaky gut. They show the candida overgrowth or the bacterial overgrowth or the parasites or the H. pylori that lead to intestinal permeability. The first one is the candida metabolic and vitamins test, and the second is the bacteria and parasite stool test. More information, of course, you can always find that uh, on my website at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. Again, I just want to say the podcast is meant to be informational. You can take action or not. And if you do, it never needs to be through Equal Life. It can also be with your local integrative health practitioner. It can uh, level two. It can also be with your local naturopathic doctor. So you get to choose. I just want you to know the information and the action steps are out there that you can take. That's it. All right. Number five is this. Moving away from the gut, we have excess, two excess hormones. Okay. One, estrogen. The second, testosterone. Both of them in puberty and in adult life can cause acne. And they do all the time. Okay. So if you produce too much testosterone, it can lead to acne. Okay. If you produce too much estrogen, it can produce acne. Now, you might say, well, those are normal hormones within the body. And I would say, yes, I agree with you. The problem is, if there is liver congestion, which I'm going to be talking about in just a little bit, and you cannot remove those excess hormone metabolites from your body, you're going to have a buildup. And that buildup can absolutely lead to bacterial imbalances and acne as well. That's been very well documented, very well researched uh, in the in the scientific data. So I wanted to share that with you, but do understand that this is very common. We see it all the time in our practice, both men and women, women, especially with estrogen dominance during the luteal phase, especially the seven days or so to sometimes 10 days before day one of menstruation. So if you start to get more bloating and skin issues, uh, during the last, let's say days 21 through 28 of your cycle, it can absolutely be from estrogen dominance. Again, you can run a lab on this to confirm if you choose to. And that lab is called the stress hormones, mood, and metabolism. So you can run that lab, no doubt about it. Uh, but you can also, again, you can just try a product called estrogen balance, which helps to balance estrogen to get that excess out of the body using uh, extracts essentially from cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and bok choy. Uh, it's called Indol 3 Carbonol, um, I3C, and, uh, and DIM as well. So something to think about. But again, I just the reason why I share this with you is that everything has an underlying root cause. Everything is fixable. Number six is this, a lack of sweating. It is difficult to get flawless skin. Some people can do it because, again, there is a genetic component to skin. There's no doubt about it. I know genetics do matter. Yes, they do, right? But lifestyle has so much to do with it that some people have just great skin, right? The kapha body type typically has amazing skin, thick, lustrous hair. They've got a lot of pros, right, in that category. Thicker skin, uh, less wrinkles, uh, great aging for hair, skin, and nails, okay? Vata body type, uh, a, a little bit less, definitely more catabolic. 
and, and Pitta's uh, typically thinner hair, et cetera. Anyway, today's not an Ayurveda show, but I'm happy to go through that in the future as well. What I would say is this though, that sweating allows you to, at a faster rate, clean your blood. I mean, that's basically a big part of it. Yes, sweating is there to cool your body. I understand. But because I always get comments back like, that's not what sweating is for. Um, but I actually, our, our community is pretty amazing. I do have to say that. I mean, really, our community, uh, they get it. They understand. You get what I'm trying to do. I do a daily show, not to get in the weeds on every single topic on every show, but to really give you action steps. And these are nine, I mean, these are seven action steps that you can take. And sweating is one of them. If you are able to push more out, through your pores, you are going to help your liver and your kidneys to a far greater degree because those are excretory organs, right? The liver processes all these toxins through your body. That includes hormones as well. Once they're used up, okay, get it out of the body, right? What does it do? Moves it to the bile, moves it to the intestines, the intestines out of the body through stool. Okay, what does the blood do? Goes through, filters through the kidneys, kidneys filter it. Uh, what isn't needed is sent to the uh, bladder and outside of the body, right? As urine. So we look at that, but also you have a way to do it through sweat. And if you sweat, you actually clean those pores out. So uh, just even doing a facial steam, of course, works. Why? What does it do? Well, it makes your face sweat. It opens up your pores. It allows some of that sebum and, and uh, oil and other bacteria under the skin to actually be moved out at a faster rate. Uh, again, a, a good clay mask. I've talked about this before. That can help. But you don't want to be doing those things every day because they're also drying for the most part for clay masks, right? So again, we'll talk about that more in the future. No doubt about it. But sweating can help with so much. It really can. So I'm a big believer in that. Uh, as many days a week as possible. Get a good sweat. Doesn't take long, 20, 30 minutes. All right. The next one and the last one is this, liver congestion. It makes all of these worse, right? So if you have liver congestion, a lack of water hydration makes it worse. Food sensitivities, processed food, leaky gut, hormones, not sweating. Why? Your liver has to do more work. What happens is there's a specific phase one and phase two detoxification process. And if your body is always on overload from more toxins, environmental or hormones on the inside or leaky gut in the inside, it's doing more work. It does its job every single day, 24 seven, but it can't get everything, which means it moves to your fat. It moves to your skin. So really functional medicine detoxifications are no longer a nice, things, nice thing to do. With over 77,000 man-made chemicals in the environment, we need to be doing those every single quarter. So if you've never done one before, I highly recommend a 21-day functional medicine detox and then quarterly seven-day detoxes to maintain. Almost nothing will get you better results in the short term. Almost nothing. For overall health, wellness, anti-aging, body transformation, almost nothing because it works on uh, works on healthy levels of blood sugar, healthy levels of inflammation, healthy levels of hormones, healthy levels of digestion. It includes fasting. All of these different things are included. So I can't recommend that enough. Our environment, our overall gut function, medications, alcohol, all of these things stress the liver and a good functional medicine detox will help with all of those. But then on a daily basis, eating good, clean food, focus on your hydration, all these things help the liver as well. Uh, I also have a free course just on what functional medicine detoxification is. And you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash courses to find that detox course. It's completely free. It really is. Go to stephencabral.com forward slash courses uh, to find that functional medicine detox course, completely free, talks all about it, how you can do it through food, good nutritional supplements. Uh, and again, you can work um, that process however you see fit. So those are the seven. If you follow those seven, I'm telling you right now, it will dramatically improve your skin. So seven factors for flawless skin. Uh, hopefully this was helpful today. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm always happy to answer. And of course, if this show was helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. And I'm sure you probably heard the intro to the show. But if you didn't, I just want to reiterate that after years of planning and trying to get to this stage, I'm so excited to announce Equal Life is now going to be offering free at-home lab testing. Yes, free. That means you're going to be able to start with our $299 minerals and metals test, where you learn about your stress levels, your electrolytes, all the minerals that we're looking at in your body, we're looking at trace minerals and heavy metals as well. We're gonna look for lead, mercury, cadmium, uh, arsenic, and also aluminum. 
you're also going to get a readout of what your results mean because you're going to be getting a 30 minute coaching consultation just one on one with you and one of our Equal Life coaches. Plus, you're going to get a personalized plan built just for you. It honestly doesn't get any better than this. It truly doesn't. And this is why I'm doing it. I told my team that if we can find a way to just break even, not even make any money, I want to be able to get these labs to people. That, that was my whole goal because it was life-changing for me at 19 years old. It introduced me to functional medicine and integrative health, and I want to do the same for you as well. So when you head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash shop, you're going to see a banner right there. Click on the banner. It's going to teach you more about our Iobowen membership rewards program. This is for people that see the value in using good quality nutritional supplements on a monthly basis. All it takes is basically using the daily nutritional support or the daily activated multivitamin and then a vitamin C product or a magnesium or an omega-3, whatever you like. Again, most people are using at least two to three different products. Why not use those same two to three? You can get them through Equalife, an extra 15% off on subscription, and we'll ship you a new at-home lab test every three months on us. Every 90 days on subscription, we will be shipping you a free at-home lab test. I'm telling you right now, I've been looking forward to doing this for years, didn't know how I can make it happen, and this is it. So super excited about this. Check out all the details at stephencabral.com forward slash shop and just email us with any questions. Take care, everyone.